Now, investment in renewable energy came in at more than $280 billion in 2019, and uh, Bloomberg NEF is forecasting that that could rise above the $300 billion mark this year. That's New Energy Finance, Bloomberg New Energy Finance team. Our team has just released its predictions for 2020. They see more investors committing to a cleaner future, further progress on a circular economy, and a record year for onshore wind. Let's get the details now with Albert Chung, head of analysis at BNF. Albert, really good to speak to you. Happy New Year. Sounds a little late for that, perhaps. But uh, as we're talking about the year that was and the year that lies ahead, what are your key predictions then for yeah. 2020? So, as you said, we're calling $300 billion of new investment into clean power generation capacity this year. That's up from about 280 last year. And last year was actually pretty flat. It was only up about 1%. Um, but we see more opportunity in the coming year for, for new deals around offshore wind all over the world and particularly solar in the US and China. And I think what's really interesting is, even though investment has been a bit flat, the actual power capacity additions are growing really rapidly. We think this year will set an all-time record for the actual amount of new clean power plants added to the global grid and could exceed 200 gigawatts, which would be a huge milestone. Matt? I, want, I wonder about um, battery technology. Uh, and really, in terms of, of, of all the technology that you guys cover, does Moore's Law apply? I mean, do you expect a doubling of capacity and a halving of price every couple of years? Yeah, totally. I mean, battery tech is coming down in cost so rapidly. It's almost day to day. There's not many things in life that are, are getting cheaper, but batteries are one of them. Um, they cost about one eighth of what they cost 10 years ago. And that's just going to carry on and continue. So that's unlocking real opportunities to build large-scale battery energy storage plants to help support the power grid and to help move renewable power from when it's produced to when it's needed. We reckon there'll be about $5 billion invested in solar plus storage power plants in the coming year. That's essentially where you build a battery alongside a power plant so you can move that power into the evening. Um, and really a lot of that action is in the sunny parts of the US where you've got great resources but also the right regulatory models in place. Oh, you talked, you, you said that investment had been fairly flat last year in uh, renewable energies. That, that's almost surprising given uh, so much uh, protest activity around climate change and a lot of talk about ESG priorities. Mm -hmm. Why, why so little growth in that space? The real, the real drivers of um, renewable power deployment today still are very much based on the, the power market designs and, and how countries go about designing their power markets and the policies involved. What happened two years ago was China actually reduced the amount of money it was willing to put into the solar, um, the solar industry. China's by far the biggest renewable energy country in, in the world in terms of installations. So when that happened, mm. um, even though pretty much every other part of the world is growing, the global total ends up looking quite flat. We think China's going to rebound and that's going to drive growth. And, and let me ask you about this other concept, the circular economy, because we, we've we heard it quite uh, quite frequently over recent years. Is it, uh, it doesn't seem as if it's something that's uh, reinventing the economy as we speak, but little by little at a micro level, there are lots of businesses responding to this sort of circular challenge. Yeah. How much, how material is that, I suppose? Um, well, so material is the operative word, because actually the material sector, steel, chemicals, plastics, all the rest of it, is responsible for a really significant portion of our global carbon emissions. So every bit of plastic or chemicals or steel you can use less of is meaningful from a climate perspective. And one of the ways you can use, use less in terms of virgin material is through recycling or extending the life of existing products and, 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 and remanufacturing things. And it's really being driven from two ends. One is the consumer saying, we want to buy sustainable products. And the other is now, I think policymakers are also cottoning onto this mm. and asking companies to do more. And how close are we to us to a period where companies are going to be made responsible for disposal or recycling of, of products that they manufacture? What, what, there's, there's a proper way of describing that. Yeah, uh, you're talking about extended producer responsibility. That's something we see coming, coming along. It's not going to be extremely sudden, but uh, it is on its way. I wonder about the, so Germany must be, have the most per capita installations of windmills. They're everywhere. I think they're awesome, but the German people don't seem to like them very much. Um, I wonder about the difference between the wind market and the solar market, because these windmills, they could be used forever, and I would think that solar panels uh, become obsolete fairly quickly. Which is producing more energy? Uh, which is cost? Which is more cost efficient? What, what do you think about these two sources? So they're both extremely cost efficient already. Um, we think either wind 
or solar is the cheapest form of power generation in most of the world today. There are still a few places where coal or gas might be cheaper, but that, that's a really a minority now. Um, what these two resources do is they actually provide different, different profiles of, of generation to the grid. You know, solar helps you meet that midday peak, and wind helps you ride through winters and evenings. Um, and that's why we're finding actually it's pretty much 50-50. If you look at the, the installed base in the world today, there's about one terawatt of, of renewable capacity installed. That's about, um, that's about the same as, let's say, all, all generation in the US, say. But globally, that's your renewable installed base. Half of it's solar, half of it's So wind. it's very complementary. Exactly. Mm -hmm.